Hi everyone, this lesson is on diverticulitis and diets. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about certain foods and beverages that can either increase the risk of diverticulitis and other diverticular issues or decrease the risk of diverticulitis. And we'll also talk about diets in general that can either increase the risk or decrease the risk for having diverticulitis and other diverticular complications. So before we talk about those diets, let's first talk about what diverticulitis is. So diverticulitis is going to be a gastrointestinal disorder involving an inflammation of diverticula, which are these outpouchings of the colon or large intestine. So if we look in this image here, here's the stomach, it leads into the small intestine, which then leads into the large intestine. And this is where these diverticula or these outpouchings are going to occur. Now, most commonly, we're going to see these diverticula in what is called the sigmoid colon. And if we were to zoom up, take a look right at the large intestine in a zoomed up fashion, we can see these diverticula, these little outpouchings. They are essentially bulges in the large intestine due to weakened bowel walls. Now having diverticula, the presence of diverticula, is the condition known as diverticulosis. But when these diverticula get inflamed, it is diverticulitis. So what actually causes or increases the risk for having diverticula and ultimately having diverticulitis. Some of the risk factors include increasing age. So because they are due to weaknesses in the bowel wall, as we get older, due to the many different times the large intestine has contracted over time, the bowel wall can become weaker with age. So increasing age is going to be a particular risk factor for having diverticulitis. Another very important risk factor for having diverticulosis and diverticulitis is long-term low fiber intake. This is going to be important when we talk about diets later on. High red meat intake is also another associated factor for having diverticulitis. We can see smoking, lack of exercise is also another associated risk factor. And there is a question of whether high BMI or obesity is a risk factor as well. And we can also see another risk factor, including long-term NSAID use or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are going to be medications like ibuprofen. If these are used very frequently, this is also another factor that increases the risk for having diverticulitis. And some signs and symptoms of diverticulitis includes abdominal pain, and the abdominal pain is most commonly going to be in the left lower quadrant. So if we're looking straight at the patient, this is the patient's right side, this is the patient's left side, and the left lower quadrant is going to be in this area here, and that is where the sigmoid colon is. This is the reason why we can see oftentimes pain in the left lower quadrant. We can also see changes in bowel habits, so there can either be constipation or diarrhea or an alternation of both. And we can also see UTI or urinary tract infection like signs and symptoms. So it's not a, a urinary tract infection, but it can appear like it in some cases. Patients can have a feeling of urinary urgency or frequency or even dysuria or burning sensation when urinating. This is due to the fact that a diverticula is inflamed and it gets swollen and it starts to push on the bladder and that can make patients feel like they have those urinary symptoms. And there are other complications of diverticulitis, including diverticular bleeding. So those are going to be the signs and symptoms of diverticulitis, but this lesson is talking about diets and foods and beverages that can either increase or decrease the risk of diverticulitis, and we'll talk about those in the upcoming slides. So a lot of what we're going to talk about in this lesson comes from this article entitled Role of Dietary Habits in the Prevention of Diverticular Disease Complications, a Systematic Review. It was published in 2021. And this particular topic we're going to talk about here in a moment comes from this observational study entitled Western Dietary Pattern Increases and Prudent Dietary Pattern Decreases, Risk of Incident Diverticulitis in a Prospective Cohort Study. So we're first going to talk about diverticulitis and the Western diet. So it is known that long-term consumption of a standard Western diet is associated with an increased risk of diverticulitis. Now, you might be wondering what's in the standard Western diet. A lot of times it's going to consist of high consumption of red meats, processed meats, high-fat milk, products, french fries, refined grains, and processed sweets. So as we can see in the standard Western diet, we're going to have refined grains, so it's going to be low fiber grains, and a lot of these have low fiber as well. And we also talked about the fact that having a high consumption of red meats can increase the risk of diverticulitis as well. So having the low fiber with the high red meat intake is going to increase our risk for having diverticulitis. And as we mentioned before, a high red meat intake is also associated with an increased risk of diverticulitis. And there seems to be a plateauing of risk. So the risk 
increases up until there's about six servings of red meat per week. And after that, there's really no more increased risk. So it's the low dietary fiber that's going to be the larger contributor of risk in diverticulitis and high red meat intake to a lesser extent. Now, along with the Western diet, this study we just mentioned also talks about another diet, and that diet is the prudent diet, as they title it in their study. So the prudent diet is what they describe as having a diet of high consumption of fruits, vegetables, and high grains. They compared this diet with the Western diet, and they found that a prudent diet, a diet of Higher consumption of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains decreases the risk of diverticulitis compared to the Western diet. This makes sense. Again, a lot of these particular food items are going to have higher levels of fiber than the particular food items in the Western diet. So that's going to make sense. And that leads us into the next diet we're going to discuss. And the information in this particular slide comes from this article entitled Intake of Dietary Fiber, Fruits and Vegetables, and Risk of Diverticulitis. So this is what I'm going to call the high fiber diet. So diverticulitis and the high fiber diet, we know that low fiber is a risk factor for diverticulosis and diverticulitis. And we also know that high dietary fiber reduces the risk of diverticulitis and diverticular complications. As we just mentioned, the prudent diet is going to have better outcomes than the Western diet. So it's going to be a diet that's higher in fiber, but we also have to look at those three particular food groups they talked about in the prudent diet, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, because if we're to look at each of those food groups individually, we're going to find that fiber from vegetables is not as effective in reducing risk of diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So if we want a better high fiber diet, we're going to have to rely on other food groups, especially, and this is what's been found in some more recent studies, that high consumption of whole fruit So apples, pears, and prunes is going to be a better source of fiber for reducing the risk of having diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So very important, having good proper consumption of whole fruits like apples, pears, and prunes are going to be very important in reducing the risk of diverticulosis and diverticulitis. And that also leads us into another potential diet that can help with diverticulitis. And this is the Mediterranean diet. Now, the Mediterranean diet is a diet with whole grains, vegetables, fruit, beans, fish, and poultry. It's going to have limited red meat intake. Now, there's not enough research on the Mediterranean diet and diverticular outcomes, but as we see in the diet itself, it has very good levels of fiber from at least whole grains and fruit, and it also has limited red meat intake. And as we mentioned before, Red meat intake is a at least minor risk factor for having diverticulosis and diverticulitis. And we also know that the Mediterranean diet contains high levels of fiber and antioxidants, and it avoids simple sugars. So the Mediterranean diet has many different health benefits. It includes decreased blood sugars, decreased blood pressure, decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. But again, we don't have data for whether or not it improves diverticular outcomes, such as reducing the the risk of having diverticula in general or reducing the risk of having episodes of diverticulitis. But from what we know of the Mediterranean diet, it's likely that it does help with reductions in risk of diverticulosis, diverticulitis, and other diverticular complications. Now that we've talked about some diets that increase the risk for diverticulitis and others that decrease the risk for diverticulitis, let's talk about certain foods and beverages that can either increase or decrease the risk of diverticulitis. So some of the evidence we're going to talk about comes from this article entitled Nut, Corn, and Popcorn Consumption and the Incidence of Diverticular Disease. And some other information comes from this article entitled Diverticular Disease, Reconsidering Conventional Wisdom. So we're going to talk about nuts, seeds, and corn because nuts, seeds, and corn avoidance has been classic advice for individuals with diverticulosis and past diverticulitis. So it used to occur that when patients found out they had diverticulosis or diverticulitis, that they were advised not to eat nuts, seeds, and corn because they believed that these particular foods could exacerbate or trigger diverticulitis episodes. But with newer research over the past several years, we've come to find out that there's really no evidence for this. There's really no evidence that consumption of nuts, seeds, and or corn increase the risk or incidence of diverticulosis or diverticulitis. In fact, some evidence suggests that there is actually an inverse correlation with consumption of nuts and popcorn and the risk of diverticulitis, meaning that in patients that potentially have diverticulosis, if they eat more nuts and popcorn, they can seemingly have a reduced risk of 
having an episode of diverticulitis because these potential foods can have a good amount of fiber in them. So that's also an important point to make note of here. And it's also been looked at whether or not consumption of nuts, seeds, and corn changes the risk of having other diverticular issues like diverticular bleeding, and it doesn't seem to. So even though there may be an inverse correlation here with consumption of nuts and popcorn and reduced risk of diverticulitis, consumption of nuts and corn and seeds do not seem to reduce the risk of diverticular bleeding. But we are going to talk about something that does appear to increase the risk of diverticular bleeding. So we're going to go back to this systematic review again. And from the systematic review, we're going to talk about diverticulitis and alcohol consumption. So alcohol consumption is associated with an increased risk of diverticular bleeding. So diverticular bleeding is simply where you have diverticula. You don't necessarily have to have diverticulitis. You don't have to have an inflammation of the diverticula, but because there's blood vessels in and around those diverticula, and because the walls of those diverticula can be weak, the blood vessels in those diverticula may break and cause bleeding. We may see bleeding in our stool. There may be what we call hematochesia, red blood in the stool, that it could be diverticular bleeding or it could be some other issue. But the evidence that has been presented seems to suggest that if we have diverticulosis, we have diverticula in the large intestine and we're consuming alcohol, we're at an increased risk of having diverticular bleeding. Now, alcohol consumption does not seem to increase the risk of episodes of diverticulitis or other diverticular complications. It only seems to increase the risk for diverticular bleeding. And this seems to occur regardless of the type of alcohol, and it also appears that the risk of diverticular bleeding from alcohol consumption increases with increasing level of alcohol consumption. So that's also something to point out here as well. Please check my lesson on diverticulitis and also check out my lesson on what to avoid if you have diverticulitis. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.